Head start. Head start. Left behind. Someone's losing ground here. True. But there's a reason. True. There's a reason. I give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no Accurate. choice. So today we are going to check out another George Carlin joke from his stand-up comedy routine, Life is Worth Losing. I do enjoy his pessimism and sarcasm. Thank goodness for that. I don't know why I feel so affectionately for George Carlin. I really freaking love him. I think of all the comedians I've looked at on the channel, possibly George Carlin. He says through humor that which I wish I could say in real life. Mm, can't relate. I don't have that problem. Before I get into today's video, do be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Otherwise, you are going to get a lump of coal for Christmas. A lump of coal. Tough, tough luck. So like, share, comment, subscribe. And also, like, you could check out Patreon and channel membership, and even maybe my second channel, see if anything's going on over there. We have a lot of fun on Patreon, particularly. There's a really good community there, and they give me great ideas for videos and stuff. George Carlin, dumb Americans. Oh, God. I always get the blame when the subject matter is this. But say what you want about America, land of the free, home of the brave. We got some dumb ass motherfuckers floating around this country. <laughs> dumb ass motherfuckers, you yeah. know? Yeah. Now, obviously that doesn't include this audience. I understand that. You seem intelligent and perceptive, but the rest of them, holy jumping fucking shit balls. Funny how it's always that way. I feel that way about just strangers. Strangers are stupid, but people I know are very intelligent. Dumber oh. than a second coat of paint. And this ain't just ranting and raving. This ain't just blowing off steam. I got a little evidence to support my claim. It just seems to me, seems to me, that only a really low IQ population could have taken this beautiful continent, this magnificent American landscape that we inherited, well, actually, we stole it from the Mexicans and the Indians, but <laughs> hey, it was nice when we stole it. It looked pretty good. It was pristine. Paradise. Have you seen it lately? Have you taken a good look at it lately? It's fucking embarrassing. Only a nation of unenlightened half-wits could have taken this beautiful place and turned it into what it is today, a shopping mall. A big fucking shopping mall. You know that? Although those are expiring now. That's all you got. That's all you've got here, folks. Mile after mile of mall after mall. Many, many malls. Major malls and mini malls. They put the mini malls in between the major malls. And in between the mini malls, they put the mini marts. And in between the mini marts, you got the car lots, gas stations, muffler shops, laundromats, cheap hotels, fast food joints, strip clubs, and dirty bookstores. Oh. America the Beautiful, one big transcontinental commercial cesspool. And how do the people feel about all this? How do the people feel about living in a coast-to-coast -coast shopping mall? Well, they think it's just fucking dandy <laughs> they think it is cool as can be because Americans love the mall they love the mall that's where they get to satisfy their two most prominent addictions at the same time shopping and eating millions of semi-conscious Americans day after day shuffling through the malls shopping and eating as as a non-American, we also love to shop and eat. So sorry. I know it's mindless. I know we should all be studying academia all the time and bettering ourselves as humans, but, you know, we don't. Especially eating. Americans love to eat. They are, they are fatally attracted to the slow death of fast food. Hot dogs, corn dogs, triple bacon, cheeseburgers, deep fried butter, dipped in pork fat and cheese whiz, mayonnaise soaked, barbecued mozzarella, patty melts. Americans will eat anything, anything, anything. If you were selling sauteed raccoons assholes on a stick, <laughs> Americans would buy them and eat them. Especially if you dipped them in butter and put a little salsa on them. This country is oh big God. time, pig time. Forget the bald eagle. You know what the national emblem of this country ought to be? A big bowl of macaroni and cheese. Yeah. A big bowl, because be everything in this country is king size. King size, extra large, and super jumbo. Especially the fucking people. <laughs> Have you seen some of the people in this country? Have you taken a good look at some of these big fat motherfuckers walking around? Jesus. Big fat motherfuckers. Oh my God, huge piles of redundant protoplasm <laughs> lumbering through the malls like a fleet of interstate buses. The people in this country are immense, massive bellies, monstrous thighs, and big fat fucking asses. 
And if you stand there for a minute and you look at one of them, you look at one of them, you, you, you begin to wonder, how does this woman take a shit? Oh, I never wondered that. Shit? And even more frightening, oh. how does she wipe her ass? Oh, oh no. Can she You're even right. locate her asshole? She must require assistance. Are paramedics trained in this field? And standing right next to her, of course, with a plate full of nachos and a mouthful of pie is her clueless fucking husband, Joe Sixpack. Joe with his Sixpack. monstrous swollen beer belly hanging dangerously out over his belt, beer belt buckle, this guy ain't seen his dick since the Nixon administration. And if you stand there and you look at the two of them, you begin to wonder to yourself, do these people fuck? Is this man actually capable of fucking this woman? It doesn't seem structurally possible that these two people could achieve penetration. Maybe they're in that Cirque du Soleil or something. I'm telling you, the people in this country are every half, every one of them is 50 pounds overweight. They are gargantuan. And in the summertime, God help us, in the summertime, they all want to wear short pants. Jesus, Lord, protector of all that is good and holy, deliver me from fat people in short pants. They all got short pants, big bellies, fat thighs, and dumb kids. Short pants, big bellies, fat thighs, and dumb kids. Every one of them's got two dumb ass kids with them. And the whole family is wearing t-shirts, and every one of them's got the same t-shirt. I'm with stupid. Apparently in this country, the stupids are an extended family. And besides wearing them t-shirts, everyone in the family's got on a backpack. They got a backpack strapped to their back so they can carry around lots of stupid shit. And the reason they gotta carry their stupid shit strapped to their backs is because their hands must remain free at all times to hold food. And to get that food up to the mouth where it gets shoveled in with all the rest of the disgusting shit they ate that day. I will say, there is a culture in America of walking and eating that isn't so pervasive in Europe. Um, most people I know would walk and eat like when they're walking around. I actually can't do it, but not because I'm like, I think it's wrong or anything, because I just, I can't do two things at the same time. Like I just can't do it. So I will very reluctantly eat and walk if I have to. And another reason for the backpacks is these people are going to buy even more stupid shit. Yay. They ain't got enough stupid shit at home. They just had a stupid shit sale. They ain't got to buy more. They're gonna go out in the parking lot and stuff this stuff into the big, fat, ugly, oversized SUV that's got plenty of room in it. Plenty of room in it for stupid shit and lots of room left over for these big, fat, ugly motherfuckers to get them home. Stopping, of course, for jelly roll and fried dough. America's bigger. These people, these people are efficient, professional, compulsive consumers. It's their civic duty, consumption. It's the new national pastime. Fuck baseball, it's consumption. The only true lasting American value that's left, buying things, buying things. People spending yeah. money they don't have on things they don't need. Money they don't have on things they don't need so they can max out their credit cards and spend the rest of their lives paying 18% interest on something that costs 1250. And they didn't like it when they got it home anyway. Not too bright, folks, not too fucking bright. But if you talk to one of them about this, if you isolate one of them, you sit them down rationally, and you talk to them about the low IQs and the dumb behavior and the bad decisions, right away they start talking about education. That's the big answer to everything, education. They say, we need more money for education. We need more, more, more books, more teachers, more classrooms, more schools. Uh, we need more testing for the kids. And you say to them, well, you know, we've tried all of that and the kids still can't pass the test. They say, ah, oh, don't you worry about that. We're gonna lower the passing grades. And that's what they do in a lot of these schools now. They lower the passing grades so more Damn. kids can pass. More kids pass, the school looks good, everybody's happy, the IQ of the country slips another two or three points, and pretty soon all you'll need to get into college is a fucking pencil. <laughs> Got a pencil? Get and the fuck in there, it's physics. Then everyone wonders why 17 other countries graduate more scientists than we do. Education! Politicians know that word, they use it on you. Politicians have traditionally hidden behind three things, the flag, the Bible, and children. No child left behind, no child left behind. Oh, really? Well, it wasn't long ago you were talking about giving kids a head start. Head start, left behind, someone's losing fucking ground here. True. But there's a reason, True. there's a reason. There's a reason for this, there's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. 
I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, accurate, the accurate. big, wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have accurate. no choice. You have. And I got to say, accurate, not just for America, globally. <laughs> Well, in the Western world, to be fair, I don't really know that much of it. I live in the Western world. That's where I know about it. Yeah. Owners, they own you. They That's own true. everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, <laughs> lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table to figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient <laughs> workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They really? want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. Uh -huh. You and I are not in the big club. And by the way, it's the same big club they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. And nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Good, Accurate. honest, hard-working people. White collar, blue collar, doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hard-working people continue. These are people of modest means. Continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all. At all. At all. Man. You know? Oh, one man isn't clapping. And nobody seems to notice, nobody seems to care. That's what the owners count on, the fact that Americans will probably remain willfully ignorant of the big red, white, and blue dick that's being jammed up their assholes every day. Because the owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. <gasps> oh, that's so poignant. Well, that was a wholly negative video, but also very true. I'm sorry to say, I do think that is the case. Most of us are little worker bees for the people up high. Um, and I'm not into politics or anything like that, but I do know that the system is rigged against us and we're all just keeping on swimming when we're just kind of getting screwed over by the people up the top. I don't know the answer though. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll just say, George Carlin put it very well, uh, and I appreciated his thoughts on it. Did not love when he got very graphic uh, early on in the video, because that's not my kind of humor talking about, well, I just call it poo humor. But very, he's just, he's a good speaker. If not, I know he's a comedian, but I think he's just an interesting person. You don't have to agree with everything an interesting person says. There are lots of people I think are interesting whose viewpoints I don't believe in. Do you feel like when you watch people on YouTube you want to watch mostly people whose views you agree with or do you like to watch people whose views you disagree with or people whose views you have nuance about? Nuance is a wonderful thing I think has been lost. But anyway, that's it for today for you guys on the other side. Bye! You need to agree with the people that you watch on YouTube. Do you? You look very uncomfortable. Do you want to move? Do you want to come sit here? Do you want to sit with me? Do you want a sandwich? Do you want a balloon? Do you want a treat? Oh, that did it. That did it.